have some chicken and some ribs. from the old neighborhood. There was a couple there named Claudia and Robert. Now I mentioned Claudia before when I talked about my neighbor Ray. But they were a very unlikely couple. Claudia was a nice looking woman. shuffled almost like a backwoods type person Those two are completely opposite. Robert and I played in a band together. guys 
Lisa was never happy unless he was drinking. First couple of drinks he was fine. Third or fourth drink he started getting snarly. It's the only time I ever knew that he worked. If he did that every day, that would have been pretty, pretty impressive. So we got into a battle of the bands. Don and a local pub waiting our turn to play. out. Another guy named Rob was in. We played the semifinals, but never went any further after that. I was surprised we got that far.
that's pretty much it. No, Rob was very disappointed. By that time, I kind of quit playing in bands. I had uh, built a recording studio in my basement. So Rob and I laid down the, the drums and a guitar, then a bass, and then went upstairs to record the piano. His friend played the piano. And he managed to crank out two songs that were not too bad. And he paid me for recording time. See him after that. Now this guy that moved in with Claudia, whose name I can't remember, was a very nice guy. I liked him. He was the opposite of Rob. Always happy, joking, funny, quick-witted. Remember him and Claudia went down to Victoria to see Stevie. boys about nine or ten. His name is Dylan. Robert. Just like me, he's a Dylan, Bob Dylan fanatic. So he named his first child Dylan. I would eventually do the same. Robert. 
must have been born in 46. Because he wanted so bad to be a child of the 60s, you know, go to Woodstock. And he just missed it by a couple of years. He was really into that era. to um, he hated his job at the mill just hated it he decides to go back to school get some education and um, he's taken some Just he wants to heal all his friends. <laughs> but prior to going back to school, he had to take the sort of aptitude test or something. No, I don't know.
thousand hamburgers. That were only two dollars and fifty cents, and back in those days, that was still that was a good deal then, because most hamburgers back then were about four or five dollars. So I was leaving; they were coming in. I said, "What do you guys have to eat?" I said, "Hamburgers." He goes, "You can do better than that, can't you?" He was kind of like that, right? So they're in their new house for probably not even a year. It was a year. Well, about a year. And they got their first bill for property taxes. And they thought it was way too much money. And they couldn't pay it. Well, they could if they managed their money better. Eventually, I kind of lost touch, but ran into Robert one time at the grocery store. My wife said she'd seen him somewhere, and he told her that he had cancer. So when I saw him, he looked very thin. I mean, he was never overweight, because he was always a smoker, and he was never overweight, but my gosh. His face looked really thin. I pretended not to notice. So we kind of lost track of him. Eventually we'd move out of the neighborhood, but one day, before Linda and I hooked up, I was standing with one. This would have been around, it was Christmas time, 2011, 2012, around there. It was January 2012, that's right. January 2012. This uh, lady I was dating her and I had gone down to Victoria, stayed overnight. Next morning, we're walking through the mall. Robert said he passed away a number of years ago. I thought, wow. 
Thomas said when he passed away, she said a few years ago or a number of years ago, or, and that was in 2012, so it was probably, could have been five years earlier, ten years earlier, I don't know. But anyways, our kids are all grown up. Our oldest boy was, is now in his 40s. The, the youngest is the daughter. She's got kids of her own. And the, the middle child, Jesse, I ended up uh, working with him. I trained him starting in around, oh, 2000, 13, 14. He came to work at the facility I was working in. I recognized the last name right away, and then the first name. I said, you're Robin Shelley's son? He goes, yeah. No, he was just a little kid when we were neighbors, but him and I worked together, got to know each other all over again. And funny enough, when I asked him when his dad died, he said, well, I already can't remember, it was a while ago, you know. So, I never did find out exactly when Robert passed away. She said she was a funny guy to work with, a lot of fun. You know, much younger than me, obviously, but... Good personality, the girls liked him. Andy Backman lived there for years, you know, Backman Turnover Drive, lived there for years. Stuart Mark Golden used to be in the Rockford Files, he lived there. Robin Williams had a property there. Beautiful island. Anyway, that's what they were from. They moved here, got to know them, very friendly.
me when they lived on Salt Spring, they had cows for neighbors, so they weren't really used to living in the city. and paper clips, but it's funny. Now they, unbelie unbelievably enough, managed to buy a house a few blocks away in older home. They, they managed to buy one. Like I said, borrowed money off his parents and her parents and this cousin that aunt and managed to get a place to Thank you. 
2009, 2010. I like to look Peter up. See how he's doing. But I remember back then they never had a phone, you know, and stuff like that. It was kind of funny. So, when they moved out, the neighbor from hell moved in. All the people that lived there before were renters. This guy bought the place. His name was Bob. buy whiskey, but you buy this whiskey that actually had a, a, a place to put your finger in there, like a, like a jug of this great big thing of whiskey. It was always on his kitchen table, and he never got too far from that kitchen table, let me tell you. My nose is itchy. Anyways. ever seen in my whole life. Bob thought they were great. I think the whole problem with Bob was he was never really sober long enough. You know, my neighbor, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy ate my nachos, that video. Jimmy once said to me that even when those guys are sober, they're never really sober because they have so much alcohol in their veins and their system that <laughs> they just can never really so be sober. Yes, Bob. 
whatever you mind. Because the fence we had was old, falling down, leaning. So I'll pay for it. I'll, I'll build a wall. You build a fence. <laughs> There's a deal. You're on, buddy. He builds this. This was no small job. The retaining wall at the base was probably two feet of the base. And then narrowed up to about seven inches, I think. Six or seven inches on top. Six inches. They had all the forms that frame it. It was 121 feet long, as long as a yard. He hired a crew to come over. And, um, frame it because you have to put the forms down and frame this whole thing for the forms. They ended up quitting on them because they thought they were getting ripped off. It was too much work. And when they left, they took a bunch of his tools. <laughs> so of course, he had the cops come over. wall build, pours all the cement. Well, it's still where we go along, stick some uh, machine bolts in there. I haven't sticking about that far. Three eighths, I think it was. And then I proceeded to build a fence, just laid down the rail, bolted it down. I built a beautiful cedar fence. It's called board on board. We have a board this way, the board that way, the board this way, the board that way. So it looks the same on both sides. Yep. I did that way, that way. He couldn't, you know, say well your side looks better because both sides look great I stained it I still got the better deal I don't know what he spent on that wall but it had been a lot of money and then he wasn't done yet he goes to put a roof on he doesn't pull off the old tiles. Now oh, he made two mistakes. When he was opening up his um, his his house, like he was chopping some of the roofs to make it a more open concept. He took out one of the walls. swears that there was already a, a, a second layer of tiles underneath. So he went over top of that with a third layer. Well, you could see after done, the roof was starting to sag in the middle. He did all this work without permits, without inspections.
white shirt, big gut. His shirt was always unbuttoned. It always had like mustard stains or coffee stains on it. He had white hair that was always just need to be combed or something. Never shaved him. Always had five o'clock stubble. He's a hard-working guy. Separate from his wife. Has a couple of kids. He's a good dad. Oh, he's kind of a serious guy. Crack the odd joke, but very young. Always planning things, always doing things, you know. Gets things done. He buys the house. He's living there for a short time. houses like the one in mine was not a full eight foot basement and the reason for that was if you only made it seven feet you didn't have to pay taxes on it because it wasn't a full basement a full height I mean so yes the company come in disconnect all the plumbing wiring raise the house up
soon. Unfortunately for the rest of the neighborhood, he didn't care what you had to do. So he had a lot of, a lot of students, you know, or no, he would say, well, they're serious students. Well, well they had these students there and uh, there was party time every night. They had parties going all night. You throw them out, you get another group in, same thing, you know. Just these young people moving in. And I mean, I, I was the same way when I was young, but it was just every time you had to evict them, you get somebody else who's just doing the exact same thing, having one party after another, you know. Two o'clock in the morning when the bars closed, all these cars would pull up, doors slamming, sound of beer balls clinking, door slams, music's on, you know. People out in the front lawn, back lawn. It was awful. Finally, this went on for a long time. He finally gets a really nice family in the basement. Oh, I gotta tell you, I forgot. After he raised up the house, he had to get the roof fixed. He had to completely take off the whole roof, and there was three layers of tiles on there. And he had to put in a support with a beam in the middle of the house. Because um, it wasn't structurally sound. So the roof he replaced wasn't very old, but just wasn't, wasn't safe. Too much weight. his retirement policy because he had the use right to the upstairs in the basement. He was making money hand over foot. Smart guy. But that was an interesting house. A lot of interesting people lived there. Trust 
interesting house, like I said. For a lot of changes over the years. I think of Rob and Claudia living there. And all the people after. One thing I always remember about Claudia. She was born Christmas Day. But she always celebrated her birthday. June 25th. So I remember she had a big party this one summer. June. Her birthday. It's pretty cool. I'll say one thing. That house was never really a dull moment. I remember my neighbor Jimmy across the street was so livid with the partiers that he threatened to buy the house himself or burn it down. He was so mad he was actually going to burn it down that he thought maybe him and another neighbor would buy it and rent it out. I love you all. You take care. We'll see you next time, okay? Bye now.